Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki. I run the social media channels Purely Chickens here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. And I'm the author of the book, Chicken Keeping Pure and Simple. And today I'm gonna to be making a recipe that's on page 82. Uh, I call it Nikki's Chick Brick, but I'm gonna change it from what I had in my book. The good thing about this recipe is it's really versatile. So you can change it, you can add things, you can play around with it. It's a lot of fun but it keeps your chickens busy on days where they might be bored. I notice my chickens getting bored a lot when it's winter and they don't wanna be outside, so they're kinda of stuck in their run and they just don't wanna go deal with the weather. This is also really good for, you know, if you have bullies in the flock or chickens that are picking on each other and the pecking order is insane or you're integrating new chickens or new chicks and you need some distraction. So one thing that's new to this recipe is this stuff here. It's called Hen House Hemp and it's from Eat and Pet and Pasture. I'm gonna put the link and my discount code for them down below. Um, and this is basically just hemp seeds and they are very good for your chickens, high in omegas. And bonus, they make your chickens egg yolks super orange. I'm also adding the grubs from Eat and Pet and Pasture. They look like this, they're black soldier fly grubs. And these are really high in calcium and protein. Great for my chickens right now because they're molting. And I like these grubs the best because they're fed in organic pre-consumer waste. And so I know my chickens are getting the best grubs possible. Plus I like to eat them myself too. No, just kidding. Some other things that are going in here, black oil sunflower seeds, high in protein and vitamin E, really great for those feathers. Like I said, my chickens are molting. It's also great for their skin and their egg production too. Some rolled oats, not very much of this, but this is gonna help bind it together. Their actual chicken feed. So my group right now is on grower feed because they're molting, so I like the higher protein. And they also, um, I also have younger chickens in the group, so they need to be on something that's not layer feed. And this is what I'm gonna be putting in as the main base. I feel like the crumbles work best because they help hold it together, but you can also use like a mash feed or a layer feed or pellets, whatever you have that you feed your chickens as their main diet. Ground flaxseed, this is gonna be great for potassium, iron, calcium, protein, but it's also gonna help hold it together too. I'm gonna to melt some unrefined coconut oil. I don't like to give my chickens too much fat content. I'm not gonna overdo it. This is only one cup and I have 30 chickens, so they're not gonna be getting very much of it. And then last but not least, five of the prettiest eggs I could find. Eggs are like a complete nutrition source. They are also gonna be great for these molting chickens because it's high in protein. A really great addition to add to their diet is scrambled eggs. I know there's like that rumor out there that if you feed them eggs, they're gonna eat their own eggs. I've not had that issue, been doing this for years. I try not to feed it to them raw. Um, sometimes I'll drop one and they'll grab it and that's fine. I find that if you cook them, um, there's no issue at all. So, so these are just gonna go right into the chick brick. They're not even gonna know they're there. I'm also gonna put the shells in because the chickens can eat the shells. They're a great source of calcium, but you do have to crunch them up first. You know what, I also had some extra uh, pumpkin seeds, so I'm gonna throw those in too. Oh, and I almost forgot blackstrap molasses too. It's a binding agent, but it's also good for the chickens. Potassium, iron, magnesium, calcium. One thing you might want to do is add a little bit of water. You want the consistency to be like it can pack together. So if you're pushing it with your spoon and it's packing together, then you're good to go. But if it's not, you might want to add a little bit of water. Just until you get the consistency that um, allows you to kind of pack it into the pan. Now you can put this in any kind of pan you want. You can do muffin tins. You can do a nine by 13, you can do any, any sort of baking dish. I would suggest oiling the sides and putting some parchment paper on the bottom so it comes out easier. I'm gonna use spring form pans just because I can easily open them up. <laughs> just because I can easily open them up and not have to worry about uh, them sticking too much. All right, so I have the parchment paper in the bottom and coconut oil around the edges. All right, the next part's pretty easy. All I'm gonna do is just Fill up the pan and pack it down. All right, and you really have to pack it down with your hands to get it in there really good. 
You really want it to pack down as much as you can because that's the whole point of the chick brick. You want them to have to work to get at it. It keeps them busy longer. It keeps them from pecking at each other because they're working on the chick brick. The recipe I made today made two springform pans full. I think one's a nine inch and one's an eight inch. All right, and that's it. We're ready to put them in the oven. All right, I just stuck them in the oven. It's at 350. We're probably gonna leave it in there for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna keep checking on it and make sure it doesn't burn. Carrying them out to my chickens to see how they like them. I think it was a success. This is Bluey here standing on top of it. She's the adolescent of the flock. And it took them most of the day to get through this. They did pretty well. If you found this helpful, like, subscribe, share with a friend. And until next time, keep chicken keeping pure and simple.